Hello and good day. During my last stay in Sandakan, I had an opportunity to visit the Bornean Sand Bear Conservation Center, which is located in the Sandakan Rainforest National Park in Sepilo. During my visit, I stumbled upon the founder of the park, biologist Dr. Wong Siu Ti, and we had a little chat. Afterward, he agreed to be interviewed about his work and what he is doing related to the park. Let's watch the interview. Hi kids, how are you? In today's episode of Science Di Mana Mana, we will learn about the role of human in maintaining the nature from a Malaysian biologist working on the conservation and rehabilitation of the Bornean sand bears. My name is uh, Wong Siu Ti. I am the founder and the chief executive officer of the Bornean Sand Bear Conservation Center. I'm originally from Penang and then I came to Sabah 22 years ago to study wild sand bears. I have a diploma on veterinary and animal science. I got it from a university from Taiwan. My bachelor degree, my master degree, and my doctorate degree is from University of Montana, United States of America. The things that drive me to establish uh, Bunin Sambay Conservation Center some 22 years ago to study wild sand bears. And then, uh, although I'm working in the forest, I study the wild sand bears, uh, I see they are wonderful animals. You know, these animals are so elusive and not well known. When I come out from the forest, I saw bears being kept as pets, being slaughtered uh, for food, for medicines, and then they also being captured, kept in small cages, uh, being displayed for people. All of the animals outside the forest, especially the one that keep as pets, are suffering. I know people cares about their survivors. As a researcher who studies sun bears, I think I have to do something to help the bear because I understand the issue. My responsibility, you know, because I know more about sun bears than anybody in the world. If there will be somebody to help them, there will be me. Looking at the model of the Sepilo Roundtown Rehabilitation Center, some 12 years, 13 years ago, I come up with a proposal to establish the center and I'm very lucky to have the support from the Sabah State Governments, the Sabah Wildlife Department, Sabah Forestry Department and an NGO called LEAP to help me set up this center. Uh, in our university, I met a professor who was at a time looking for a Malaysian student to do a study on sun bear. said, hey, that would be me then, you know, so he's very happy and then after that, uh, we start to communicate and at the time I was doing my bachelor degree and I have to wait until I finish my bachelor degree and then get into the master degree and study sun bears as my master project. So I came here to Sabah to study wild sun bears in 1998. Mm -hmm. That's how everything started. So first of all, we managed to eliminate all of the pets keeping sun bears issue in Sabah. So right now we have rescued 62 bears over the last 12 years who were kept as illegal house pets or being or animals being displayed in crocodile farms, mini zoo. With the education, go to school, talk to the public about uh, raising the awareness of the sun bears. And right now, there are more and more people knows that keeping a sun bears is illegal as well as hunting and poaching is all illegal. And then in terms of ecotourism, you know, our center opened to the public in 2014. We, every year we have a lot of tourists come here. So the numbers of tourists that visited BSPC so far have reached more than 300,000 uh, people. And all of these tourists uh, come here to recreate and also spend money. And 60% of our visitors are foreigners. And when foreign tourists come here, they spend money here. So in terms of generating revenues to tourism sector, it plays a very important role. Through ecotourism, we can keep the forest for a long time, we can keep the wildlife alive for a long, long time. And this is our national treasure. I mean, our forests have so much 
biodiversities so unique that is not found in other countries. Over the last 10 years, we have been actively involved in various research projects from wild sunbears to the sunbears in our center. So we have learned so much about the bear and then that rehabilitation. Uh, so far, we have released seven bears back into the forest. So those bears that we rescue as a baby cub and then we successfully raise them and then release them back into the forest. So education outreach for those students who cannot visit our center, we went to their yeah, school. We give information to the students uh, about the facts of our forest, our bears, and all of them are, are not known in the school curriculum. But is it enough? Obviously not enough. You know, I hope that one day the school curriculum can incorporate information on our forest, on our wildlife, so that every single kid growing up in Malaysia knows about our endangered wildlife like sun bears. So sun bears, just like other animal plants, they all have a role, ecological roles. For sun bear, they play extremely ecological roles as a seed dispersal. When they eat fruits, they ingest the seed and the seed will pass through their digestive nice. tracts and then a few hours later come out in their feces. Uh, seeds will start germinate from there. And because sun bear is a large mammal, they are capable of swallowing fruits with big seed like wild durian. You know, the further away the seed being dispersed from the mother tree, the higher the chances of survival. So in other words, sun bear plant the forest. We are talking about, you know, fighting or combating global climatic change or global warming. And all of the big trees in our forest capable of absorb a lot of carbon. And they therefore can arguably be a very play a very important role in combating global warming as well. And then in addition, sun bears is also known as forest doctor. They keep the forest healthy. Mm. How? When they feed on termites, they actually control the population of this particular group of termite and prevent an outbreak of that particular termite species and kill many trees in our forest. Mm. So they always maintain the healthy of the forest as, and keep the population of this termite in a balanced equilibrium. And then the third one is called sun berries also play a role as a forest engineer. Uh, when they feed on stingless bee, kalulut, you know, they climb the tree and then the kalulut beehive is actually inside the tree trunk. So the sun bear have to bite and rip apart the tree trunk and, and create a hole and then get hold of the honey and in the honey. And then that cavity is that the sun bear by or create will later be used by hornbills or flying squirrels oh. as nests. And so sun bears, you know, create nesting sites for other species. They do the, a lot of digging, looking for earthworms or termite nests. There's always some food left behind. Mm. And in the forest, there's these bearded pigs, there's uh, the bonian ground cuckoo, there are the pheasants, some birds actually following bears for feeding opportunity. My future plan for the endangered sun bear, obviously there's a lot. Uh, we identify ourselves as a conservation center and then our mission statement says that we want to conserve sun bear through a holistic approach. In the near future, we will continue working on, on community conservation. It means that we work with the local community, improve their livelihood so that they don't have to poach to make money and to raise their family on wildlife. And then in the long term, we also want to breed sun bears because they are so endangered. So we want to breed them in captivity and then release those individuals back into the forest. So these are the, the, the work that we'll be doing in the next 10 years. My message to all of the teenagers is that everybody play a role in our life. Okay, As long as you identify, you can do something good for the environment, please do it. Like myself, I was trained as a vet and later trained as a wildlife biologist and tropical forest ecologist. This is the role that I play uh, to educate the public, to conserve forests, to conserve sun bears, uh, so that to bring a better future and secure their survival for you as a younger generation. So first, we have to take care of our environment. We have to take care of our nature. Okay, don't waste food, for example, and uh, don't pollute the environment, for example, you know, try to reduce consumption of plastics, yeah, and then eat conservatively, do whatever green, okay, try to think about a green way, 
that benefits uh, the environment, especially to the nature. Or start play roles by say helping NGO non profit organization Manager. on various yes uh, in uh, uh, conservation projects as volunteers. Mm -hmm. Uh, to help them on various many many things that they need manpower to do. At the same time, ensure that you learn a lot through this uh, experience. You will start caring about the nature. Teenage or younger generations growing up in Malaysia is the lack of knowledge about nature. And there's a disconnection. You know, we don't go to the forest anymore. If we do not know our forests, then you have no way to care for them. You know, and then how to know about it? Go out, go out to your local nature park, go out to Hutan Lipor, you know, go to see forests. It's okay to be bitten by leeches or mosquito or one or two. Once you know more about our forest, which is extremely unique, our forest is so special. You know, we have one of the highest biodiversity on earth. You know, in, in Borneo, say for example, you have 3,000 species of trees. And then in comparison, in the entire UK, there's only like 50 species of trees. And let alone all this wildlife uh, that we have in this forest is enormous. And then, but they are very fragile. Many of them are endangered or critically endangered or even extinct. One example would be our rhino. The Sumatran rhino gone extinct in our country just last year on November. The last one died. So with that extinctions, the extinctions is forever. Once it is gone, it is gone. So appreciate of what we have. Uh, I think, you know, instead of playing your smartphone or computer, uh, go out and learn about our nature. There's a lot of things that we can learn from the nature. So love nature and love our environment. And when you put it up, I'm sure you have a better future. Thank you. All right. Thank you.